The following conversations are taken from our channel membership exclusive weekly live show that we do on Saturdays from 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time called Members Talk Live. Find out how you can become a member and appear on the show. All of the information is down in the description below, as well as all the links to the channels of today's guests. Check them out, and I hope to talk with you very soon. All right, Jurassic Park 5. Here's my, here's my plot for it. The asteroid originally destroyed the dinosaurs. Now we're going to send dinosaurs to space to destroy the asteroid. <laughs> so we're going to cross over with Armageddon, and that's going to be Jurassic Park 5. Let's make it and happen. Get Michael Universal. Bay to the yep, oh exactly. And then the Transformers will show up. Universal, make it happen. <laughs> you heard it right here. Too. Yeah, I mean, hey, we're bringing back Transformers. Bring in G.I. Joe, the Beast Wars movie brought yeah. back. Why not? Why not? Why yeah. not? Why like, not? You might as well. <laughs> Before we get into our main topics of the show, I kind of want to just throw around ideas of what's going on with the Oscars, because that's kind of been the big talk in this space this past, this whole week. I mean, from Barbie snubs and, and Greta Gerwig, and people believe we're snubbed. And, you know, I, I personally don't feel that way. I thought Barbie was okay, but I understand people love it. It was a cultural phenomenon. Uh, so I can understand why people were upset about it, but I thought it kind of went a little bit extreme with the upsetness. But overall thoughts on the Oscar nominations, are there ones that really stick out to you? Are there ones that you think are just ridiculous? I feel this year about the Oscar nominations as I feel every year. I don't really care. It's not like the yeah. Oscars have never been my thing. Other than everything, everywhere, all at once. I was super stoked when it got nominated for everything. That was yeah. like one of my favorite yeah. movies of all time. I, I was so excited when the film won the Best Picture. I ran around the family couch. That's how pumped <laughs> I was for the movie to win. That was like the only excitement I've had over the Oscars. I didn't watch it. I saw the slap uh, like via in the internet, social media. Um, yeah. But this year, uh, I mean, like, I didn't really have any horse in the race. I didn't, like, I knew none of my favorite movies were going to be uh, nominated. The Barbie thing, Greta Gerwig definitely, I think, deserved to be nominated for Best Director because of what she did. Like, the fact that they made Barbie somewhat of a plausible movie, like, is a feat in itself. Like, when I first heard of it, the first trailer was just like, this is going to be a farce. This is going to be terrible. And then they made it. A, a really good movie. I enjoyed like Barbie was in my top five of last year uh, of last oh, year's wow, movies. Nice. And the fact that she kind of corralled everything together, you know, as far as Margot Robbie, I'm, I'm not really upset about that, but I think Greta Gerwig definitely deserved a, a nod. I really can't keep up with all the, the, the awards when they get announced uh, at the beginning of every year. And I could yeah. only keep up with them like via Twitter. I mean, this past year was such a, I would say it's such a weird 2023 as far as film goes. And the whole Barbenheimer thing was just highly anticipated with like, you know, this is where everything is going to be encircling in as far as the awards for best support, best picture, best uh, lead actor, lead actress. It's almost like a no brainer. <laughs> and so it's uh, at times I find it a, a little laughable, but but that's just me because I really don't don't keep up. I honestly haven't seen 95 percent of what's nominated. <laughs> like it's just all the movies that get nominated come out like near the end of the year and my theaters usually don't take them. <laughs> like mm. poor things did not come to my theater. American fiction did not come to my theater. Um, the zone of interest did not. Although yeah. I think it, is that on Netflix? I can't remember if that's on Netflix or not. But no, no, no not zone of interest. Okay. You can't oh, okay. find that anywhere. Honestly. Okay, so zone of interest didn't come to my theater. Like a lot of these movies that came out that are for best picture and director and all that stuff, I haven't seen. So I, I like my thing is if I haven't seen it, I can't really comment on it so i can't say whether or not snubs or this or that happened yeah. but i will say stoked that the holdovers got some nominations in there best picture yeah uh adapted mm -hmm. or uh, original screenplay i'm definitely rooting for the holdovers i'm kind of in the same boat as uh terrence and frank like i don't really keep up with the oscars they tend to seem very political like at mm. the end of the day like they they kind of have an agenda of what they're really trying to push and like the movies that we all tend to cover really 
tend not to to win the huge awards. Now, obviously, right. Barbie was the biggest snub. I understand it. I like Terrence. I also had Barbie in my top five when I did my you know recap. Um, I believe I had it at th- four. I want to say I think I had it at four for mine. But because it was just, you know, beautifully done Greta Gerwig from the set pieces to the accessories really brought everything to life. And I thought it definitely deserved more credit than what it was. It was a it was a serious thing that tackled social issues in a clever way. Was it a little more intelligent than for for the kids? Yeah, absolutely. But it definitely deserved the the win awards. Oppenheimer also was, you know, I'm saying very good as well. Like um, Mm -hmm. Frank had said, the Barbenheimer experience alone kind of like changed the entire narrative of the box office. Like it really was a craze. So the fact that it was a craze, both of those movies, both of them deserve the recognition that they deserve. It's but it's it's also not like Barbie didn't get recognition, right? Like, like you got best picture for Barbie, you got production for Barbie, you got costuming for Barbie. Ryan Gosling is nominated for supporting actor, which I personally would easily swap him out for like Jeremy Allen White from uh, Iron Claw or anybody, any of the brothers from Iron Claw. Yeah, but yeah. Bar- Zach Barbie, Efron. Yeah, like Zach. I I I wish Zach Efron got nominated. I don't know who I would take out, but I wish he had gotten yeah. nominated. But Ryan, how about you? What do you think of the Oscars overall? Have you seen a lot of what's nominated? Uh, yeah, I'd say I have. I mean, most of what's on the list, I don't, you know, disagree with dispassionately. There are some where I'm like, um, like Elemental for Best Animated Film. It's like, again, it's not bad, but it's like, mm. like Best Animated Picture. It's like, I don't know, it, it's not like Boss Baby, you know tier level of like <laughs> oh, okay that's gotta be by default but you know uh but you know on to the big you know greg gerwig I, I don't know it's it feels like kind of an incident in which like the oscars has a habit of, of recognizing a female director's accomplishments for best director and then they just sort of forget about them uh, meanwhile you know like male creators they can get recognized almost every year like john williams like he got an Oscar nod for the score for Indiana Jones 5. That's nothing against John Williams. I like him as a composer. He's composed basically our childhood's uh, you mm-hmm. know, score, but he gets nominated almost every year. It's like an obligatory nomination. Well, yes. you got to have John yeah. Williams in here. Yes. <laughs> but they did nominate a female director, uh, Justine... Yeah. Uh, oh, what's her last name? Trout? Tra- Trait? Justine Trait, I think. She directed... Uh, Oh shoot! What did she? Is she? Um, crap! What did she? Fall leaves. Was it? Oh, Anatomy of a Fall. Oh, Anatomy of Fall. Yeah, got it. Yeah, Anatomy of a Fall is what she directed. So they, they didn't like uh, just nominate men this year, which is you know that's nice. <laughs> they nominated any woman. One. Yeah. Yes. One. Yes. The they got, one. They got yeah, the yeah. Uh, the points there. <laughs> Sexism is no more, boys. Yeah. <laughs> they fixed it. The Oscars have solved it. Yeah. I definitely. I'm I'm not like that invested in the Oscars as much as a lot of cinephiles are. Mostly just because I just can never see everything. Like last year, I got the closest to seeing the most that got nominated, and that was fun. But yeah, definitely I'll have to catch up on, and we'll see. We'll see what happens with the Oscars this year. It's funny because we kind of trashed on Sony a lot last week, last episode. So I thought, you know what? Let's cool it with the Madam Web and, and their movies coming out. I'll leave Sony out of the conversation this week. But Sony can't help themselves. <laughs> Sony just cannot help themselves with some of the decisions that they are making. Allegedly. Allegedly. I personally believe them. But allegedly, these are decisions they are making. Because according to scooper Daniel Rickman, they are planning, or at least they are hoping, to once again get Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire back for Spider-Man 4. This is what Game Radar had to say about the whole rumor and situation going on. While actual plot details are still sealed, despite Feige confirming the Spider-Man 4 story is set, recent rumors have given a general overview of the direction the film might be heading, with a broad view to scale down the threats to reflect the sort of stories that the character usually deals with in the comic book storylines. As revealed by Daniel Rickman via his exclusive Patreon, while Marvel Studios boss Feige and leading man Holland are insistent on having the fourth film and subsequent sequel tell a more grounded story, Sony, there they are, guys, Sony, still insistent on working in both McGuire and Garfield for a multiverse story. These two desires stand opposed to one another with the plot contrivance 
artists uh, needed to bring the two alternate Spider-Man back for more action would undermine the end of the last trilogy and bring in elements that aren't grounded. Sony, <laughs> I, I, I can see Sony thinking about all the money that Spider-Man No Way Home brought in. <laughs> money, money, money. Bringing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in. And as someone who loves... Obviously loved that movie, loved Spider-Man. Spider-Man No Way Home was a dream come true. I will forever be grateful for that movie. I cannot tell you how much that meant to me. It meant to so many other Spider-Man fans, seeing all three of them come together. Something I never thought, let alone, I never thought we'd see Tom McGuire and Andrew Garfield come back as Spider-Man. I, I Let alone see them all, three of them together in one movie. That was just like I, the highlight of my movie going years up until this point. All that said, this decision, if true by Sony, is missing the point of what made Spider-Man No Way Home special. Because it was an event. It was something that was out of the ordinary. You were basically celebrating 20 years of Spider-Man on the big screen in that movie. The plot of the movie with Spider-Man going to Doctor Strange, bringing in the other villains, and then having those two Spider-Man come to help Tom Holland defeat their villains... That makes sense. But now you're at a point where Tom Holland, Spider-Man, you know, he's not with the Avengers. No one really knows he's Peter Parker. How are you going to get them back? How are you going to do a multiverse thing? And you and when you take an event and you make it the norm, it's no longer an event. And it's crazy to say, but event like if you do this again, it's not going to have the same excitement, ex same, the same flair to it. It's just going to be, oh, they got Andrew and Toby back again. Like, the, I, I mean... I'd be excited, obviously. There'd be some fun stuff happening. But it wouldn't be the feeling that it was. You're, you're not going to recapture what No Way Home was. If anything, if you beat the horse too much, you're going to lessen that that experience. But I'll throw it to you first, Aces. What do you think of this story? Do you think Sony is this incompetent? <laughs> Once again, the word comes to mind that they yeah. would try to do this and try to uh, undermine the grounded story that they set up at the end of the last fight. <sighs> Absolutely. To, to your point, No Way Home, I always say, was a celebration of Spider-Man that was fan service done correctly, right? They were uh, they effectively gave us Spider-Man that made sense for the MCU mm -hmm. and then hit the reset <clears throat> button to be able to give the Spider-Man fans, such as ourselves, a more grounded storyline going forward. So it seems like they had it plotted out. Sony is just looking at the bigger picture like, yo... We are t like they think that they're taking credit for like we're successful. Like no, MCU is successful, so therefore they're milking all these Spider-Man adjacent movies that nobody cares about, adding to the superhero fatigue that is currently out. And it's just it just seems like they don't get it. I really do wish, and I know it's not going to happen. I really do wish that Kevin Feige and company would just hand them a blank check and say. Just give us all the properties back. Like, because, like, and that's another reason why I had wished that Apple bought out Sony, because then, huh. you know, Spider Man would have went effectively back to the MCU and they would could have owned it. But it's just like you said, if it's a if it's a constant thing, it it doesn't like you have to keep up in the ante is what they feel like. I personally want a more grounded Spider Man story where we can see the street level stuff, we can see the small collaborations with Daredevil, etc. And I will enjoy that. You don't need to just because the bar is set here to try to exceed it, which is what they're going to do and what they're going to fail at. And it just seems like the same thing with the Avengers films, why people were like, just because it's hit, it's hit a certain plateau, people expect that now. Like, and if mm. it doesn't hit that, people get disappointed. Like, oh, it was okay. It wasn't good compared to this, but it's not always supposed to be like that. Give us these small contained stories. And then if you want to add them to a bigger movie, I'm all for it. But I do think Sony is just looking at it like a cash grab. Like it was cool to see Andrew and, and you know, Toby back. Like, it was it was grand. I still remember where I was at in the theater and the, and the raw emotion I felt when we finally saw Andrew pull off the mask and then we finally saw Toby walk through uh, the uh, Ned's portal. I, I like you felt that Andrew like it gave such great redemption too with yep. Andrew saving Gwen. Like mm. how can you recreate that? It kind of reminds me of the Barbenheimer situation as well. Whereas with Barbie mm. and Oppenheimer coming out at the same time, the fans and the meme culture made Barbenheimer a thing. 
and the studio is trying to latch on to that and do other things like sob patrol uh, and all this other, like all these other they tried to artificially create something that came out organically and from the like you just can't recreate that and similarly to spider-man no way home that was the moment that andrew garfield popped through that portal and took off his mask and you saw andrew garfield that was like the build-up of all of the rumors online that we've been following for years of this talk of are they aren't they is this real is this just andrew in front of a green screen someone comes out and says i created that video it's fake and it ended up being real when you saw it in the movie for the record my friend on a stack of whatever you have there you are not as of this taping in or have any knowledge of being in the next spider-man movie i feel like like I feel, I feel like I, I like. Haven't I just said that? <laughs> I just you have. Said I, just, I just want to get really clear. I want this is this the unequivocal yes no answer. I did not get a call. <sighs> okay, liar. We were so on the fence of whether or not it was going to be true or not, even though it it was kind of marketed as the worst kept Hollywood secret in history there was still some of that doubt of like will they actually show up and the movie held off for so long that when he did show up and he pulled off that mask it was just like the end of that story of the internet that the that the scoopers and the fans kind of created and sony can't replicate that in the same way i completely agree with both of you uh, as far as like no way home being an event like you said i remember in the theater, there was so many people, like you can hear it, everybody just kind of like, there was chairs, there were like people just sighing because they were just happy to see Andrew Garfield back. And then Tobey Maguire, like it just looked like they had so much fun making that mm -hmm. movie. And mm -hmm. Sony is trying to suck the life out, out of it as they do with everything <laughs> they touch. <laughs> like I said last week, Craven's Last Hunt, right? You got yeah. Spider-Man, you got Peter Parker. Nobody knows who he is. He's by himself. He's all alone. He has no man behind the desk. Uh, you know, he has nobody to help him. And then you have Craven just show up just like he did in Spider-Man 2, the Insomniac game. And he hunts him all through the city, right? It's it's a home run. It, it was literally written kind of like Batman 2 needs to be no man's land. It's like it, it just you set these things up uh, like they set it up perfectly for a great story. Bringing those two back just kind of, like you said, negates everything that you just did. It's not going to be exciting. It's not going to be as fun. Everybody's still going to see it, but like it's kind of, it's going to water down, you know, the thoughts of Spider Man 5, right? Are we going to bring them back for Spider Man 5? Are we mm -hmm. just going to have them be a Spider Man team, you know, moving forward? Like it, that's not, I don't think anybody truly wants that. I don't think Tom Holland wants that. I don't think I know Mar MCU doesn't want that, <clears> like because that's just not moving forward with the story. But Sony just if they're gonna do one thing, they got Sony's going Sony, and they're gonna mess. <laughs> they just gonna get in their own way. They see dollar signs, but <laughs> money, money, money. They don't see the potential of making Spider Man Four great. It could be a grounded great movie doesn't have to be a team up it could be anything he has so many he has so many different uh villains that you can pull from and make better uh, i would love to see william defoe back like if you don't bring anybody back oh. bring william defoe yeah. back like that guy's awesome like he the green green goblin in, in no way home was amazing that would be the only person that i would entertain bringing back only because what a great villain he is even to that point with like bringing <laughs> Roland the phone green goblin back my biggest thing is with no way home you had doctor strange like that was kind of like your your gateway to making this happen peter knew doctor strange doctor strange can do magic there's a possibility he can open the multiverse like that that was your in with Peter now not having any connections to any of the Avengers, he's supposed to be on his own. That's where they left him off. I just don't understand how you how you would bring Willem Dafoe back, how you would bring Andrew and Toby back when they've gone back to their separate universes that we saw at the end of the movie. But Ryan, are we missing something? Is there a way that this can work? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say no. I it's And I'm just, you know, been thinking here... We need another Sony leak. Like, remember years back when when North Korea hacked Sony and leaked a whole bunch of emails? <laughs> oh I remember gosh. one of those emails, amongst the countless of them, was about Sony's ideas for Spider-Man. 
And I gotta say, they weren't that much more intelligent than the ones they've got now, because they apparently they had some really dumb ideas. Oh yeah, you know, this was even before the talk of multiverses and. And back when the MCU was, I wouldn't say in its infancy, but it wasn't like the gargantuan, this move, every movie we make makes the money. You know, things have changed a bit now with the Marvels, but you, you get the idea. I worked at a movie theater when Spider-Man No Way came home came out. And I remember uh, our boss, he was so nice. He gave us a private screening for all the employees. Wow. That was one of the coolest movie going experiences of my life. Nice. And you know, it's like bringing back Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. It's like they got better. Well, maybe not better movies, but they got different movies to start. I guess my point is they have project, other projects they're working on. And to essentially do what they did, but Spider-Man No Way Home 2.0 would just, I can't help but feel like they would think it's a waste of their time at that point. No, that's a good point, too, is like you bring them back for No Way Home. It's kind of like a big celebration. They're, it's exciting. It's new. They get to hang out with Tom Holland. It would probably feel different. It would probably feel a little bit more. I don't know if we're feeling like it's kind of cynical and for the money grab. I wonder if they're feeling the same way. <laughs> Can you see a story in which bringing back Tom McGuire and Andrew Garfield makes sense to where Tom Holland is, where his Spider-Man is in the MCU right now? The only project I could ever see that and only on board with this only secret wars because you're talking about multiverse element mm -hmm. here and feige has been true to his word like ever since echo e e echo came out honestly as the first uh project for marvel spotlight for more ground level street level elements to kind of bring and stories to flesh out with characters they've already incorporated and if you know comics spider-man has always been a street level story kind type of character if you're going to bring other elements that's that only depends on like okay who we're going to team team up spider-man with you know doctor strange the avengers um midnight suns whoever but sony is like this kid whose parents forgot to hand them their ritalin because they <laughs> just they really it's like <laughs> it's like you know money la money laundering and you know to echo what taryn said no, Sony, please. <laughs> no Way Home was basically basically enough. And I echo what, what everybody has had said. It's the first MCU post-COVID uh, to earn itself a, bil a billion dollar in the box office. It's not something that can be replicated, even if this were to happen, because like we've already seen it. And also, it begs the question, how will this work? Like, do they are they going to put Doctor Strange there again to open up more portals and bring them? No, nah, come on. Like, yeah. like we've like we've seen this and, you know, we don't need a copy paste, uh, like full copy paste of this, this whole thing, just because uh, fans, both traditional and non-traditional, you know, enjoy this character so much. Um, and if I were and, and if I were them. Like, where is the long-awaited Amazing Spider-Man 3 with Garfield? How about focus on that? Really? And that's hey, they got work. Morbius 2 to make. more. This time, more Morbin. <laughs> yes. We're For Morbin. Sure. Yeah, more BS is what that's more like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More BS, that's amazing. But, but I, I agree with Frank, though. Like, um, to Frank's point, like, the more, you know, grounded stuff like you know you said echo i'm gonna say even i'm gonna go back even further hawkeye was more grounded hawkeye was a small contained story too that i watch every christmas now you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. it's just to the point where it, it does just seem like a money grab they don't have a pulse of what the people really want they really don't like mm -hmm. and yep. to terrence's point you know what i'm saying as far as you know the craven th situation too it, it would be i think it would be a little tough considering how good the video game was you know what I'm saying? Like people would definitely be comparing that to that, especially because the Sony adjacent movies don't haven't worked so far, at least in my opinion. The Venoms were kind of trash to me. The Morbius was Morbius and stuff like that. And it's just like at this point, I, I really do wish that they would just give it up. Like I, I do. You know what I'm saying? Like because yeah. but they're not. Yeah. It's too much money. Uh, again, for all their impressively stupid ideas, I still think Sony should hold on to Spider Man. Just again, I. Out of the principle of creativity and a bit of a fight against monopolization, as uh, someone with who uh, just likes writing and with a background in economics, I do hope that for the sake of creativity and that it, 
the rights don't get you know conglomerated under one umbrella because then creativity gets stagnant. I'm not against Sony having Spider Man. Like I'm kind of liking having Tom Holland Spider Man, and then Sony can do their stuff with My- Miles Morales with the uh, Cross Spider Verse movies, and they and I mean they're doing their spider-man less universe but if they got a spider-man in there i wouldn't be opposed to it like i'm not opposed to having two spider-mans going and i think with um the way that james gunn is going to be doing the batman with Robert pattinson and then his own batman in dcu i think that might open the door Mm -hmm. to audiences accepting separate uh like you know superhero universe is going on at the same time where sony can do something with their spider-man in live action while marvel has tom holland under their umbrella in the mcu but let me throw out a theory to you guys because i believe i truly believe that sony is trying through this deal with marvel because sony in this deal with marvel they have all the power they really do um if they want at any moment to end this deal and take spider-man away they can do that uh so marvel is kind of um definitely the the lower end of the stick when it comes to this deal and i truly believe that sony is trying to use this deal with spider-man to attach their universe more to the mcu to get their popularity for their sony verse movies that's why we had like um vulture show up at the end of morbius he's attached to the mcu they had venom <laughs> sneak its way into a post-credit scene of of uh, marvel they're, they're trying to attach themselves to this um phenomenon and they're trying to piggyback off of it that's what i truly believe now they have madam web (laughs) do they need doctor strange or can they get madam web to be their vessel to make this happen again and fully attach themselves to a storyline in the mcu to the point where you just can't deny anymore that those stories are connected Am I, I crazy? Think, no, I think you're right. I, I think you're right. It makes sense. It does make sense. It makes and, sense. And I, I, I for me, like, no. I, I, I just do it. for me, this feels like a sh- a tugboat captain. His ship's going down, and he's trying to get his crew off to another boat. Except that boat <laughs> is the Titanic. Oh, <laughs> because again, I, I don't want to, you know, be one of those. Oh, the MCU is downhill. It's better days are behind them, but. The MCU hasn't been doing the best lately, and I feel like to to try and attach them to ride or die on their level of success would not be the best idea. It's like, if they can find a way to carve out their own niche, Sony might have a winner on their hands. Keyword being might. I, I don't think the MCU success is behind it. I just think for the first time since the Infinity Saga, like, we, we are finally seeing cracks in the armor. Mm-hmm. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? I've heard worse. You lie. We're seeing consistently mm. bad films, but there's still good films sprinkled in there. Shang-Chi was good. Um, No Way Home yep. was great. I liked Wakanda forever. Mm. Multiverse of Madness was a letdown. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's for the first time that, you know, Loki was good, but we're just seeing how it bad it can be. You know what I'm saying? But... What you were like you, to what you were saying, Sony needs to find its own niche. Like, stop trying to milk off of uh, the MCU. D- DC tried that as far as to play catch up, it didn't work, it blew up in their faces. But, like, Zach, like uh, Zach was saying, they hold all the cards, they can choose what they want to do. The only thing that MCU has is that Tom Holland can say, I'm done playing Spider Man. That's the only mm. card that they have. He likes the MCU so much that if they were to say, we're taking away Spider-Man. He's like, I'm done. Well, he said yes. in an interview once. Remember that interview that came out when, when uh, I think the deal ended, and he was like, oh, right. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, he brought him back together. Yeah, he brought him back together pretty much because he was gonna he was gonna retire as Spider-Man, and it would have yeah. sucked for all of us. We would have suffered. Yeah, we would never would have gotten no way home. But uh, with that, guys, I think we can just go on to buy or sell <laughs> with this topic, and we'll do it a little bit differently today. We'll do our our left hand. Yeah, our left hand will be for if we believe this story is true, and our right hand mm-hmm. will be if we want to see Toby and Andrew come back in Spider-Man 4. So I personally, with my left hand, I, I believe this story is true. I honestly do. It just sounds mm-hmm. like Sony to me. And with my right hand, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, I don't want to see it. Yeah. So I'd be yeah. excited, oh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, for sure. 
I don't think it's yeah. the right decision for the story. Yeah, I'm gonna go down and hold my nose at the same time too, because this is definitely got stinker <laughs> written all over it. So. Yes, Jurassic World Four is apparently happening. Um, I mean, I wasn't expecting to hear this announcement so soon, especially after Dominion. Which I don't know. Thumbs up, thumbs down. How do you feel about Dominion? Because I, I'm a thumbs down. Okay, 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 okay. So we're all kind of on the same page. Dominion did not really work for us. That is one big pile of shit. So that's kind of where we can set the base of where we'll jump into this conversation because this comes to us from THR. They say, you can't keep a good T-Rex down. Although it's been two years since the last time dinosaurs roamed the Earth in 2022's Jurassic World Dominion, Universal Pictures has hardly kept its biggest franchise trapped in amber. The studio is deep into development of an all-new Jurassic World movie and has David Kep back at the keyboard. Kep was the writer of the original 1993 Jurassic Park, famously directed by Steven Spielberg, and its sequel, Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Uh, the project, which has been flying under the radar, is far enough along, and the script is in a well-liked shape that the studio is whispering about a possible 2025 release date. For those of you not keeping track, that is next year. Uh, there is no director on board. <laughs> But Frank Marshall, the veteran and celebrated producer who oversaw the Jurassic World trilogy, is back producing, as is another Jurassic vet, Patrick Crowley, Spielberg World executive produced via his Amlin Entertainment banner. And that comes to us from The Hollywood Reporter. So, I mean, next year, 2025, that is crazy to hear this announcement now. Usually you hear an announcement and it's like the movie's coming out in like two years, three, especially a big movie like this. Um, I guess the question that we can throw out there to start with is... Is this too soon, guys? Do you think Jurassic World 4 should have waited a bit more from Dominion? I mean, keep in mind, Dominion made a billion dollars. <laughs> and as I like to say, when a studio makes a billion dollars, they're coming at your door and saying, we need another one, regardless whether or not you thought it was a one-off or it was the end of a trilogy, because they were saying that. When Dominion was coming out, they were saying, this is the end of the Jurassic movies. Bryce Dallas Howard said, this is the end. We're moving on. Made a billion dollars. Next thing you know, we're getting a Jurassic World 4 kind of fast-tracked here. Uh, Ryan, what do you think of this? Are you looking forward to a Jurassic World 4? And does the fact that David Kapp, the original writer from Jurassic Park, coming back, does that help your excitement, or do you not really care about that at all? I I am not very excited. For me, Jurassic World... The Jurassic World series, I feel about it the same way John Mulaney feels about his college. We gave you all this money and you spent it already and now you want more money? It, I love a good John Mulaney reference. Yeah, I, it's like, again, I did not enjoy Jurassic World Dominion. Like, it's not a matter of time because, like, the movie could come out. Uh, Jurassic World 4 could be the last movie I watch on my deathbed and it would still have been too soon. That's, <laughs> as for them bringing back the original writer... I mean, uh, I, I don't know. It feels at this point the Jurassic World series, if not then, then it definitely is now a like full blown franchise, you know, uh, series that is written by boardroom at this point. Mm, so safe to say, you're over it. You're over the yeah, Jurassic uh, franchise. I was over it like all the way back with Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom, but Dominion was just the final nail in the coffin. I honestly feel a little hesitant uh, as far as having a fourth installment because when when you already complete a second trilogy, it, we're at a point where like okay we're done you know whether whether or not for us we felt that it's done pretty well or it's it it just it just didn't it's it sucked completely. I'm I'm just done with dinosaurs. <laughs> so <laughs> you're just completely done with dinosaurs. I'm just done with dinosaurs. I mean, I mean the 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 first trilogy, especially with, with the original 1993 Spielberg one, it's you know it's enough to relive that 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 magic of seeing seeing that Brachiosaurus uh, on on 4K screen, you know, mm -hmm. over and over, and that's that honestly would just be enough for me. And I I mean I did enjoy Lost World too, even though. Um, most people have very indifferent opinion about it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I have, I have to, uh, to wait and see and see how it sits, sits, how it sits with me. If it's got a yeah. bad taste or, or not. See, I think you touched upon one of the big issues with Jurassic world as opposed to Jurassic park is Jurassic park had that awe and wonder infused into it. Jurassic. Yeah. World took the Jurassic 
uh, franchise. And for some reason, they saw it more as this big action um, movie. It lost the the awe and wonder of these creatures being back. And you do get the the terror in Jurassic Park, but you also get those shots of beauty of these animals and they're like just being in nature again. And they tried to do that a little bit in the first Jurassic world when they had the bronchiosaurus dying, they tried to capture something like that. But after that moment, I feel like the franchise just didn't care anymore about putting any awe and wonder into this. So that's something I think you touched upon that I hadn't really thought about before. I'm over this franchise. (laughs) I was over it when I saw Velociraptor ride a T-Rex to, to defeat, you know another dinosaur and i'm like this is just ridiculous at this point yeah it's just seems like a cash grab i am just waiting for this to merge with another franchise i think is ridiculous when are they going to merge with the fast and furious universe on two franchises that are just milking their (laughs) stuff come together and just make a colossal blockbuster that's going to bomb in the box office like which is crazy because like like You know, Frank was saying, to paraphrase, you know, a Jay-Z quote for this situation, if I want old dinosaurs, I'll go watch the old movies. I would rather do that, which, you know, I've done recently. The Jurassic Jurassic Park movie is classic. You know what I'm saying? Lost World, I enjoyed it. Three was kind of eh, but the the all, like you had said, Zach, of dinosaurs is kind of out of the window. The mystique is gone. At this point, they're just trying to continue to up the ante. They tried the No Way Home special of let's bring back the old cast, which is <laughs> which is unfortunate because the one thing that this movie does have going for it is a good cast. They have great actors in this movie, whether it was the old the old actors or Bryce Dallas Harper, uh, uh, Pratt, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I think that they work. It's just like... I'm just over it at this point. And then the whole storyline from Dominion with the locusts was just ridiculous. Like it's just, they don't, it's like, they don't know what to do. They want to continue to do this, but they have no direction and what they want to go. And it's just, I just wish that they would just end it already. I'm definitely over the franchise and Ace just brought up the fact I was really, I was literally about to go there. Then the only logical step is for the dinosaurs to go into space now. Just like Fast and the Furious went, like it's literally the only step forward is to have them go out in outer space. I think they're misunderstanding who their fan base is. The people who watch Jurassic Park, the original, they're like my age, right? I'm I'm mid forties guy, right? And the people who really loved Jurassic Park when it first came out is not my age. They're a little bit older than me. They're in their fifties. They're in this. They they. We're in awe, but now those are those are not the people who are going to see the Jurassic World movies anymore. Mm. Like bringing back the old cast, I thought it was I thought it was comical. They kept showing Sam Neill and Laura Dern in these commercials, and I was like, nobody, they're not like these huge names. Great actors, great actress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but at the same time, they're not these huge names that are bringing people to the box office. I thought they really over marketed those two. Is if bringing those back, we're going to bring 18 and 19 year olds to see the to see that movie. What it did, I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, it made a billion dollars, which I find preposterous because that movie was terrible. <laughs> I know. Like was, they also had Jeff. Uh, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. You put him in anything. Like <laughs> it comes back for Independence Day three. I'm there because it's Jeff Goldblum. Like I, I literally like I watch him just eat a bowl of cereal because he's that entertaining. But, <laughs> but it, it everybody else it just yeah they should just give up. I mean it's gonna make money unfortunately and they're gonna keep making them. But if they don't go into space, I don't want to see it. Why don't we just movie. cross over with the Godzilla movies at this yeah, point? Right. Like yeah. yeah. I got it. It makes sense. That was my biggest thing with uh, Dominion is they were out in the world, but like everyone's day to day lives didn't change. Like people still went to work. There was there was literally pterodactyls landing (laughs) on top of tall buildings in New York City, like for their nests, and people were just going into those buildings to the. I can see I can see New Yorkers ignoring that though. New Yorkers ignore (laughs) everything, so that's that's how it is. Yeah, they're going to continue about their day. But it it just looked like a perfectly clean perfect world that just had uh composited dinosaurs placed into it like it didn't feel real it didn't feel lived in it felt so fake yeah all right jurassic park 5 here's my here's my plot for it 
the asteroid originally destroyed the dinosaurs. Now we're going to send dinosaurs to space to destroy the asteroid. <laughs> so we're going to cross over with Armageddon, and that's going to be Jurassic Park 5. Let's make it and happen. Get Michael Universal. Bay to direct. Yep, oh exactly. And then the Transformers will show up. Universal, make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it right here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, we're bringing back Transformers. Bring in GI Joe, the Beast Wars movie, brought yeah. back. Why not? Yeah, why not? Why yeah. not? Why like, not? you might as well. You might oh, as well. To, to, if you're gonna do it, you might as well just make it so ridiculous where we don't even believe it's a movie anymore. Where we could just sit back and just, like, okay, like Fast and Furious, how they're like superheroes now. Just sit back and just, like, okay, these dinosaurs literally, they almost transformed when the Velociraptor went on a T Rex. Like, you might as well just add a Stegosaurus in there to give them armor and just like a Triceratops. Like, make it Power Rangers. At this point. A- Ace just yeah. wrote the fan fiction right here That's and what then. I'm saying. <laughs> I love that. That's so great. I will, I will throw this out though before we move on to our last topic. I will throw this out. Is there a director, because there's not a director attached to this yet. Is there a director that if they announced him or her, that would get you excited for this? Like Bryce Dallas Howard, she's someone who is really starting to prove herself as a director, especially with some of her episodes on Mandalorian and stuff like that. Um, I think that if they announced Bryce Dallas Howard was directing this, that would kind of pique my interest. But if they announced, and I forgive me because I can't never remember the guy's name. If they announced that the director of Godzilla Minus One was taken on this project, I'm in, 100%. I think he'd be a great pick. I think I'd be with that, too, because Minus One focused more on the plot line instead of just, Mm -hmm. and Godzilla was there moving the plot, so I I would agree with that. Neil Blomkamp. If if he's attached to this, I think he would give it some type of different feel, Mm -hmm. visual, a a different visual feel. It would be more of a human story. uh, Yeah. Because I think his movie is always great, even though they don't make a lot of money. Yeah. And lower the budget. Make the budget a little bit smaller. Contain the story a bit more. Don't be so gigantic with it. And just focus maybe on like one set of... You know what was great? Was that battle at at a... What was it called? Bedrock, whatever it was called. The short that they put out on YouTube, where it was just this family camping and then a T-Rex attacked their campsite. That was great. And that's what I was kind of hoping to get more of in Dominion that we mm. didn't end up getting. But if you if you scale the story down a bit more, focus on one family, kind of like a quiet place with dinosaurs, like that could be really intriguing. And Neil uh, Volkamp would be a great director for that. I, I mean, I guess for me, like again, while you've listed a bunch of directors that like Godzilla, Minus One, you good, Neil Blomkamp, but yeah, all right, he's good. And Bryce Dallas Howard, she's good, but... I don't know. Again, like I said, I'm just really checked out on the Jurassic World movies now. Yeah. Fair There's enough. no saving it. <laughs> yep. Clear. Time of death. <laughs> I have no idea like why I'm thinking about James Cameron just making that awesome visual thing that he that he can just duplicate from Avatar and just put in a good solid story with with the visuals of a huge island or it, it could be space too i don't know i don't care <laughs> well there you go right. the rumor is that avatar 3 and 4 will take place coming back to earth you bring it back and there's dinosaurs there boom beautiful <laughs> jurassic it's avatar earth thing. it's a prehistoric earth and everything like james cameron don't don't let him hear this he'd be biting at the bit for it oh my god <laughs> all right i lied okay i take it back james cameron being directing jurassic world 4 not that i expect it to happen he's going to be directing avatar movies till the day he dies right. at this yeah. rate well, I don't even feel like I have to ask, but I'm just going to ask anyway. Uh, do we buy or sell Jurassic World Four? <laughs> I'm going. I'm going on the fence with this one. I, if it, if they announce the director, it could get me excited, depending on who it is. Mm. But yeah, I definitely feel kind of burnt out after Dominion. And this last topic, this kind of came out of nowhere this week for me because Matthew Vaughn, he's got Argyle coming out. By the time this is uh, airing on Monday, it'll be at the end of the week that we get Argyle coming out. So Matthew Vaughn is making the circles. He's talking about some stuff. And for a while, it seemed like Matthew Vaughn was going to do nothing but Kingsman movies. It just seemed like he was just going to stay there forever. But he recently did an, an interview with Collider, and he talked about how he is going back to a franchise he worked on before, but it's not Kingsman. It's kick-ass. Here's what he had to say to Collider. Regarding a kick-ass three, he says, we're halfway through it. There's very, very, dare I say it, and it's going to be a cliche coming out of this head of mine. It is very, very meta universe. It is what, you know, kick-ass was reinventing and creating an R-rated superhero, and no one was really doing it. This is taking that whole concept to a worthy, not even a sequel, but I think it's just a whole new way of doing kick-ass, which couldn't be more kick-ass. He went on to say, Uh, Vaughn didn't stop there either. 
He also decided to tell Collider that the new Kick-Ass will be the third entry in a trilogy that starts with School Fight, an action movie produced by him and helmed by stunt coordinator turned director Damian Walters. Vaughn stated, the trilogy will be School Fight, this movie, let's call it Ram, uh, the to- for the time being, and then Kick-Ass, and they're all connected. Some background, School Fight was already shot and is done, and Ram is currently being filmed. In fact, Vaughn was wearing a jacket with the logo during the interview. That comes to us from Collider. Now, I don't know if I've just like just not been paying attention to this. Maybe I had my head in the sand and in the Sony news. I don't know. But I had zero indication that there was more kick ass coming. I didn't know there was going to be a third one coming, let alone that there's like this what sounds like a connected universe of movies happening with one of them already shot and one currently being filmed. Um, I'm very intrigued by this. I think Kick-Ass could totally work nowadays because when you had the original Kick-Ass come out, it was kind of before the big boom of the cinematic universes. Mm -hmm. It almost played like a parody of the more solo superhero movies, like very heavily Sam Raimi. If you do something where (laughs) Kick-Ass is so just built in for a universe where more people are inspired by this guy who decided to become a superhero um, in real life. And you can go to different corners of this world of people who were inspired and are doing these crazy, stupid things to be superheroes. I don't know. I find the story super intriguing, what they're working on. I'll throw it to uh, you first, uh, Terrence. What what do you think of this? Are you a fan of the Kick-Ass films? And do you think there is room for more Kick-Ass in this market? Uh, so I'm a little on the fence with this. Uh, so Kick Ass Two tried that. Like I thought that they was did, like yeah. the entire plot of Kick Ass Two was like all of these like low level. I think Jim Carrey was one of them. Like it was it, yep. like yeah, it it was a it was a very weird movie. I would say that like I didn't enjoy Kick Ass Two as much as I did Kick Ass One. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely room. Like it's it for sure could be a great movie. But like Aaron Taylor Johnson is like this Hulk of a dude now. Like he's not like some <laughs> meager teenage kid like he's grown up to be batman like he or he would be daredevil he would like he he's like at at that stature now uh but i'm for it like i mean matthew like i love the kingsman movie i enjoyed uh i i enjoyed all three the the king's man or whatever the third one was called i didn't enjoy that as much as the first two but um i mean he doesn't really put out terrible movies so i i I mean, I'm all for it. I just think that the actors that he had have aged out. Kick-Ass 3 would be like young kid. I, w- I would hope that they bring in some younger kids to kind of, you know, uh, take the mantle, I guess you could say. And and, and Aaron Taylor Johnson's Kick-Ass would be like Big Daddy or, uh, or Nicolas Cage's character in the first one and kind of groom one of them to become, you know, the next generation of hero. Uh, Cause they just have like he's aged out, kind of like the kids in Stranger Things. I keep thinking of Stranger Things season five, and they're gonna be like, they're like thirty years old. <laughs> yeah, like so. Uh, I mean, with Kick Ass three, I, I, I mean, I'm definitely gonna watch it because I'm, I'm intrigued, but I'm not really sold that that it's worth the connected universe. But to try to make connected universes for everything now, so. First things first, I love these movies. I absolutely enjoy them because I don't take them too seriously. You know what I'm saying? I take mm-hmm. them for what they are. I take them for face value. When they first came out with this, I'm like, yo, this is like a good idea of a regular guy that, you know, why can't he be a superhero? Because we've all had, you know, aspirations and, you know, thoughts to be superheroes. The second one wasn't as good as the first one, but I do like, I do enjoy them as a whole. I do think they're both rewatchable, like especially back to back. As far as, bringing in other characters i'm not too versed with the kick-ass universe to see what they could actually do but i would like to see one of the things from the comic runs of the kick-ass versus hit girl would be a dope little you know what i'm saying movie to see on uh, of that you know what i'm saying but as far as this i i buy this i i'm for it i enjoy these movies i think the cast is very good as well and uh yeah i'm, I'm for this movie so Kick Ass is on my IMDb watch list. I have not seen it. Okay. And yeah, okay. and yeah, and so hearing this news, it's it's a little funny because I picture I kind of picture I, I I compare it to the whole competition that's going on right now, like 
you know, with Marvel and DC, and now we're having, uh, you know, this kick-ass universe. It sounds awesome when I say it. And <laughs> and then and you can compare it to like you know uh, Sony, PlayStation, and Nintendo, and then Kickass is like the Microsoft version of it, and, and so like everybody is like uh, one up after uh, against one another. But but then you have also uh, the boys. I mean that's also uh, mm, bringing out tons yeah. of spin up there with Gen V already. You know doing uh, has already done done great um with with even more to come but uh but i but with, but with this uh i'm with it <laughs> that's a really yeah. good point too with the with like the boys and gens like there's so much more to explore than just the like marvel and dc that we've gotten in the past like there's so much superhero content superhero properties out there that they could play around with i did see the first movie i i've not seen the second movie and i guess my overall opinion it's like kick-ass it's a movie i enjoyed and i don't know it's like until recently with the whole news of you know kick-ass infinity it's i mean i don't know i haven't really thought much about the kick-ass movies beyond my experience watching the first one and I guess to piggyback off of Frank's comments, I, I'm just interested, like, you know, regarding the commentary, it's like, how far can the commentary go? Because I feel like the boys has like, it's sort of the peak of just meta commentary on superheroes. It's like, what, what more can kick ass offer that hasn't been said? I think if you remove yourself from that universe of this is, a don't lump it in with regular superhero movies take it for what it's worth have it stand out on its own and i feel like you'll enjoy it more because it can be ridiculous you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying and it's not trying to be anything like super crazy or intricate it's kind of just you if you take it for what it's worth you guys would definitely enjoy it a lot more yeah it's, uh, it's again, almost uh, like a parody yeah exactly I, I, that, that's exactly what it is mm. i'm not saying i didn't enjoy the kick-ass movies i'm just I'm just like interested, like how well it'll be able to compete. I, again, not that it's trying to compete per se, just what what more new does it have to offer, especially after being yeah. essentially on ice for over a decade? No, yeah. no, I can definitely see what you're saying there, man. So I guess uh, we can just go to buy or sell. Uh, do we buy or sell more Kickass films? Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm for right. it, man. I think it's a great idea. All right. All right, cool. We finally got thumbs up for this episode, so that's good. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for talking about all this with me and for being members, and I just appreciate you guys giving your time. It's definitely not lost on me that you guys are taking time out of your day to be here to talk with this fun uh, movie news with me, and I really appreciate it. Uh, tell people where they can find you, because if you liked what these guys had to say, they've got a lot more to say over on their own channels. So They're linked down in the description below. So uh, let's start with our newest member, uh, Aces. Thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you so much for being a member. We're so honored and privileged to have you here, and please tell people where they can find you. You could find me at the Ace Avenue. First and foremost, appreciate you for having me on. And this was a great panel. This is such a great idea. So if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to this channel as well and to everybody as well. But you could find me at the Ace Avenue. That's D-A-A-C-E Avenue, where I do various things. I am a uh, live play-by-play -play sports content creator and a movie guy as well. I cover the Yankees. I cover the Giants. But on the movie side, I do reviews, reactions, and rankings to all of my favorite movies and more. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at the channel Movie Reviews with Ryan Lane. I know, creative name. Uh, I review about two or three uh, theatrical movies a week, uh, the occasional old movie, and I make the occasional top ten list. Yeah, you guys can find me as Optimistic Forever on YouTube and also on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, just hear about everything that I retweet as far as movie goes, uh, brief reviews there as well, and reactions reaction shorts that i do on my youtube channels my name is t you can find me at uh on youtube at, have you seen that with t youtube channel where i do movie reviews um and i'm gonna start doing some trailer reviews as well and maybe throw some top 10 lists in there i'm working on uh, diversifying my youtube channel uh to garner more subscribers it's always fun to try different things and uh you never know what you're gonna end up liking like i wasn't much of like into ranking videos and then this past, uh, or just like the end of last year, I started to try a little bit more. And I actually like putting them together. It's kind of fun. So I've been doing a lot more ranking videos on my channel. So as yeah. far as what you can look forward to on my channel, that, that's something I'm doing too. 
All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you once again for being here. Thank you all for joining me. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Yep. Yep.